Hey friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. The last confirmed sighting of Saneha in Philip was captured on the evening of September 10, 2001 on CCTV footage from Century 21, a discount department store in downtown Manhattan. The 31-year-old physician who had been in the final year of her residency left the store having purchased a dress, pantyhose, laundry, bed linens and three pairs of shoes on her husband's credit card. Saneha left the store carrying a couple of sizable shopping bags the sort you wouldn't want to walk around with for too long. However, she never returned home to unpack them at her Battery Park City apartment, which was located a brief 10-15 to 15 minute walk away. The sales clerk would later recall that the sales clerk would later recall that Sneha had been accompanied by a petite woman in her early 30s. However, no such person was captured on CCTV according to the Charlie Project. If such a friend ever existed, she has never come forward to shed light on where it exactly Sneha went next. When Sneha's husband emergency room in turn, Ron Lieberman returned home from his shift at around midnight, there was no sign of Sneha. Ron assumed at the time she was just out late enjoying herself with friends, something that wouldn't have been out of the ordinary for his gregarious wife. However, when he awoke the next day, Ron found that he was still alone. Those rising and preparing their breakfast that bright clear September day in New York would have had no idea of the horror that were about to unfold with a world set to witness one of the most devastating tragedies in human history. Awaking at 6.30 a.m. without his wife, Ron still wasn't too worried about her absence, figuring that she had simply stayed over either with her cousin Anu or brother John. Mildly irritated, he caught the subway uptown to a meeting getting out shortly after 9 a.m. It was only then that he learned along with the rest of the world that something terrible had happened. Just after 8.45 a.m., a plane crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Shortly before 9.05 a.m., the second plane hit, this time striking the South Tower. It was a catastrophe that would spark a series of far-reaching events, shaping U.S. politics and global affairs for years to come. But at this point, there was only the immediate panic and people like Ron desperately trying to reach their loved ones as dust and darkness engulfed the city. This was the time before everyone had a mobile phone and so Ron rang their home, phone over and over only to get the answering machine every time. After getting in touch with Saneha's family members, Ron learned that they hadn't seen her either. The dread began to build. Getting back to their apartment wasn't easy. The city was in a state of complete chaos and it took Ron six hours to hitch an ambulance ride across the city to Cordon of Disaster site to the Cordon of Disaster site where they had lived together, just four blocks away from the remains of the World Trade Center while handing out leaflets Ron and other members of Saneha's family found that people lost interest once they found out that Saneha had been missing since the evening of September 10, being more focused and disappearances directly related to the Twin Towers. With this in mind, Saneha's younger brother John lied in a bit to draw media attention to her case, telling reporters that he had in fact spoken with his sister as she rushed towards the towers on the morning of 9-11. I was on the phone with her and she told me she couldn't leave because people were hurt. She said, I have to help this person. And that's the last thing I heard from her. John later admitted that he had completely fabricated this conversation and withdraw it after realizing that although it boosted coverage, this false tale of heroism, this false tale of heroism could be adversely impacting the investigation. If you want to get notified of our every video, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Thanks for watching.